Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott. We're going to go through our calculations from our percent yield lab with copper sulfate pentahydrate. Um, so uh, at the top here, we've got our chemical equation describing what happened. Um, we decomposed, we heated up our copper sulfate um, and uh, pentahydrate, and then we just have left over our copper sulfate and the five waters left as water vapor. Um, and uh, what I've done from our uh, from the videos, I've written down the data that we collected, the mass of the test tube, test tube plus our uh, copper sulfate, so this is before we heated it, and then this is our mass of our test tube uh, and our copper sulfate uh, after heating. So this is our copper sulfate pentahydrate, copper sulfate, all right? So first thing we're going to do, we can answer the question, why does number three weigh less than number two? Um, we cooked off all that water, okay? So we, we basically, uh, we lost... Uh, water uh, when we heated it, and that's the basic idea there. Now we're going to figure out um, our experimental mass of our copper sulfate that is produced, so this is not with the water, this is without, so that's involving here, but um, this particular mass, however, has the test tube in it. So we uh, want to know how much did we, actually, did we make, um, and so we're going to subtract number three minus number one, uh, referring to the numbers in our uh, data table, all right? So we're going to take our 8.13 grams, and we're going to subtract that from our 7.78 grams, and that's going to tell us how much we made in our experiment. So 8.13 minus 7.78, and that's going to be 0.35 grams, all right? And that's just the CUSO4. Um, this is called our experimental uh, mass. Sometimes this is called the actual mass. Um, and that terminology we're going to end up using for our percent yield uh, down below. So we want to calculate our percent yield here. Uh, and the formula for percent yield is um, what we call actual over theoretical times 100. So uh, again, uh, this term actual is sometimes used in this, in this formula. Sometimes they actually use the word experimental. So, but basically this is what we did get, and then the theoretical is what we should get. An important idea about our theoretical, uh, this is always a calculation. So we know what we actually got in our lab, 0.35 grams of copper sulfate left over. What should we have gotten, okay? So for that, what we need to do is we need to take a look at what did we start with, um, and because our theoretical yield uh, is based on how much we started with, okay? Um, in our lab, we were supposed to start out with approximately um, 0.5 grams. Uh, I came out a little bit uh, more than that when we weighed it out, but it didn't really matter so much. So what we're going to do is look at these two quantities. We're going to subtract them to get what we started with. So 8.32 grams minus our 7.78 grams. And so when we subtract that, we get 0.54 grams. And that's actually how much of our blue uh, copper sulfate pentahydrate that we started with. So up here at the top, we're going to calculate our theoretical yield, okay, um, which is what we should have gotten if we started out with 0.54 grams of our copper sulfate pentahydrate, okay. So and we're going to convert that in a three-step type problems. We're using three conversion factors into grams of just copper sulfate, okay. Um, so our first step is to convert from grams of the pentahydrate to moles of our copper sulfate pentahydrate. It's a lot of writing in there. And, I, and the bottom is going to be our molar mass. Um, and we calculated this earlier at 249.6 grams for every one mole. All right. Um, next, we're going to convert our moles of copper sulfate pentahydrate to just the moles of copper sulfate. I'll use a different color for that moles of our CUSO4, and then moles of our 
CuSO4 pentahydrate is going to be on the bottom. Now, anytime we're comparing moles to moles, we're going to use our equation. Uh, and these are the relationships really straightforward. For every one mole of copper sulfate pentahydrate, we're going to make one mole of copper sulfate. So these are just a one to one there. Our last step is to convert from moles of copper sulfate to grams of copper sulfate. Okay, CuSO4. All right, and this is for every mole of CuSO4. The units of grams per mole tell me we're using molar mass. So this is for every one mole. And 249.6 minus 90 grams from the water gives us a molar mass of 159.6 grams. All right. So what this calculation is going to tell us is that if we start out with 0.54 grams of, um, of our copper sulfate pentahydrate, how many grams of just copper sulfate should we make? All right. So 0.54 divided by 249.6 times 159.6 is going to give us our answer, um, which is around 0.345, rounding to two significant figures, I would go to 0.35 grams. All right, so this is our theoretical mass, which we're going to use for our percent yield calculation. All right, 0.35 grams is our theoretical. So. Uh, plugging in our numbers from our equation, the, what we actually made was 0.35 grams of copper sulfate, okay, which is coming from up here. Uh, the theoretical, which was coming up from the top, was 0.35 grams, and so I got 100% yield. Okay. Now, in this particular lab, it's actually common to get more than 100% yield. And the reason is, if you remember from the video, water vapor gets stuck up in the test tube. And if you don't notice some of that water vapor, it would actually increase the final mass. Um, so it would increase this value here. Um, and if our, if our actual yield, which is this, is higher, then the percent yield can be over 100%. Um, but uh, that's how we uh, look at percent yield. Remember that. Uh, a couple ideas that are important. Actual and experimental are used kind of interchangeably when you're calculating percent yield, but theoretical is always a calculation. Thanks for watching.